All right, the next one. SCP-189, a.k.a. the hair Im imitating parasite. Before I click on it, I believe there are some pictures of the anomaly on a person. Huh? I couldn't quite hear you. You were cut off at the beginning. Oh, hold on. All right. All right. So, here's the thing. The next SCP is SCP-189, the hair imitating parasite. I'm just going to say right now in the article, I believe this one has pictures that of it on a person, which may not be great for everyone to look at. So if you're discretion advised. If it had pictures, the pictures are gone. No, I, oh. Oh, it might be the next article. Or one of the articles I saw pictures on. Never mind. Oh, yes, yeah, the last one. The last one has pictures of the anomaly. I'm sorry. It's all good. I'm going to grab water very quickly. Okay. Wait, hair imitating parasite? Yes. Nothing is out of the realm of possibilities with anomalies. Okay. You ready? I have the water. All right. Item. SCP-189. Object class safe. Special containment procedures. Samples of SCP-189 are to be stored in the crowd containment. Facility redacted. With any surplus destroyed by incineration, subjects infected with SCP-189 are to be kept in a sealed containment chamber with an airlock that includes a chemical shower. Personnel interacting with test subjects must wear NBC hazard suits throughout their time inside the containment chamber and submit to a chemical shower before exiting the airlock on their way out. When test subjects expire or are terminated, their remains must be sealed in an airtight chamber, uh, airtight container, or body bag, which is subjected to the same chemical shower as the personnel carrying it out of the containment chamber and disposed of by incineration. Staff members found to be infested with SCP-189 are to be quarantined according, according to procedure outlined above for test subjects and treated with anti-parasitic agent 189-A. See document 189-89 redacted for treatment procedure. If 189 infestation is discovered on any individual or animal at a facility, all personnel and animals at the facility are to be inspected for the presence of 189 as detailed in procedure 189 redacted. Any staff members treated as described above, any D class and, and or non SCP animals terminated and incinerated and the facility is subjected to a thorough cleaning with anti-parasitic agent 189-A. Should any cases of 189 infestation be confirmed in persons or animals outside the Foundation, all those infected are to be immediately taken into custody and quarantined. Animals should be euthanized and incinerated, while humans are to be treated with anti-parasitic agent 189-A for an infestation, then administered Class C or B amnestics. Any individuals who may have been in close contact with the infectees or and or entered their, their personal vehicle or place of residence should be checked for SCP-189 infestation and treated if necessary. Description SCP-189 is a species of parasitic roundworm. Tentative tex taxonomic classification, Dan expunged. Capable of infesting any mammalian life form. Infection most commonly occurs as a result of direct skin contact with one or more egg sacs. These egg sacs are covered with microscopic hooks, similar to those on the cuticles of some species of nematode, which anchor the sacs on a skin surface contact with sebum and prompts the eggs inside to, to hatch, at which time the larvae seek out and burrow into one or more nearby hair follicles. Once inside the follicle, the larvae, the larva attaches itself to the base of the papilla and begins feeding off the capillaries supplying the papilla. 
Over the course of two to three days, the larva grows larger and develops into an adult. When it is fully matured, the new adult detaches from the papilla, severs the hair fiber from the root, and almost fully envelops the papilla and hair matrix. From this point forward, the worm feeds on the shells on the cells shed by the hair matrix, which would normally be from the hair fiber, and begins to grow larger. Adult 189 specimens grow only in length, extruding a tail, which incorporates some of the pigments and keratin from the cells they consume into the outer cuticle. This, this combined with the fact that the diameter of the of a species tail is usually similar to that of the of the hair that would normally grow from the host follicle. Consists 189 to be physically indistinguishable from a normal hair except upon microscopic inspe inspection. However, some specimens will occasionally flex, coil, and uncoil and or lash their tail, particularly in response to tactile stimulation. The reason for this behavior is not currently understood, nor is why only some individuals behave in this fashion, though it has been proposed that data expunged. As with many other species of round worms, 189 is hermaphrodite, with both sets of genitalia contained in the head. Hermaphroditic. Hermaphroditic, okay. The portion enveloping the papilla and hair matrix. Vernalis eggs are produced in groups of one to three and enveloped in a protective egg sac, which is then incorporated into the growing tail. Egg sacs grow their microscopic hooks, and the eggs typically mature by the time the portion of the tail containing them is extended approximately one millimeter beyond the surface of the host's skin. Once fully developed, the egg sac passes to the exterior of the organism's tail becoming loosely embedded in its cuticle. At this point, the egg sac is brought into contact with a suitable host surface, including the skin of the current host. It attaches to this surface and is pulled free from, the, from its parent. This is the primary method 189 uses to both to infect a new host and to further invest the current host. The tail of an adult specimen of 189 is no more durable than normal hair and its head no more strongly attached to the host follicle. The tail can't be cut or broken or an entire organism pulled out by any method that would similarly affect hair. Severed sections of an adult's tail can grow a new head and regenerate in into a separate individual, but only if they can attach to a suitable host. The death of a follicle infested by an adult 189, or any other event that would cause the loss of the follicle's hair, causes that individual to, to detach from its host. Without a host, adult 189 die within one to six hours. Mature eggs can remain viable to up to redacted years after the death of their parent. And as such, even dead adults can present a risk of infection. When an infected host dies, any survi surviving adult specimens of 189 continue to feed and grow, eventually burrowing into the host's tissues. Once decay begins, however, the specimen is killed by the toxins produced. Addendum 1. SP-189 was first discovered uh, redacted when Dr. Redacted, when unaffiliated with the Foundation, traveled to a remote area of Danic of the data expunged rainforest as part of a six-month biodiversity survey. Dr. Redacted brought Kara, his three-year-old pet golden retriever, along with him on the expedition. It seems likely that the dog was the first infested sometime during this trip, regardless of, the, of when the infestation began. By, this, by the time Dr. Redacted and Kara returned to the United States, it is believed that over 80% of the animal's follicles have been infested by 189, Approximately redacted days after his return, Dr. Redacted was petting Kara when the dog's fur began to move. Recognizing the abnormal nature of the infestation, Dr. Redacted contacted Dr. Redacted, a parasitologist, with an invitation to study the newly discovered organism. It was, it was when Dr. Redacted and Redacted submitted a paper on 189 for publication that the Foundation 
became aware of his existence and immediately took Dr. Redacted and Redacted into custody and seized all their research materials. Both doctors later recruited into the foundation with Dr. Redacted becoming the lead researcher in charge of 189 and currently stationed in Danik Spanish investigating indigenous populations of 189 for possible containment or, er or eradication. Addendum 2. Since the Foundation first became aware of 189, there have been redacted incidents and infestations outside the Foundation resulting in redacted humans and redacted animals confirmed infected in the various parts of the world. Continuing, continued monitoring is warranted to ensure that such incidents do not come to the attention of the general public. I forgot how the first generation had so much redacted shit. <laughs> Okay, so there's a Dr. W, Dr. I. We do not know any of their gender ages. Yeah. Dr. I is the one that's with the foundation, right? Yeah. What's her one? And. Okay, what the fuck? What? Oh, you're about to see the, the thumbnail. You ready? Yeah. Sure. Five. Four. But look at the hand. It wouldn't appear there. Well, also, that's not how it looks when it's in someone. Yeah. Also, did it fully say it would kill people? No. So yeah, so that's probably why it's, it's labeled as safe, because it doesn't kill. It doesn't kill, and technically all the things that eat are from the hair. Yeah. It does burrow into your flesh, but even as an adult, its tail ends up looking like hair. So literally, you can't see it. Anyone fear of trypophobia? Oh yeah, oh no, that's probably what this is not always going to do in the video. They're probably going to show a bunch of trypophobia shit. Sorry, so, Zanchi. Sorry, Zanchi. I, I know what it is. And if it does happen, it, this is a warning now. <laughs> yeah. This video might inaccurately show things that would trigger trepophobia. The fear of holes. Yep, and also, they did put the right licenses down. Alright, are you ready? Yep. He had been planning this trip for years. It had always been his dream to explore the Amazon rainforest, not only for personal reasons. His research would greatly benefit from what samples he could find and bring back with him. Dr. Finstead had always been an avid traveler, but convincing his wife, Dr. Which rainforest, only that it was a rainforest? Yeah, just rainforest. It was redacted rainforest. Yeah, so they've already added an accurate and also, I'm pretty sure he was alone. He was with his daughter and his dog. He's brought Kara's three-year-old going to retrieve from his... No, it's just his oh, doctor. Right. Just him and his dog. No, yeah. no daughter. Yeah, just his dog. <laughs> they just... The woman was added. <laughs> yep, just a random person. Dr. Wu, to come along for the ride, hadn't been easy. She wasn't much for the exploring lifestyle. Nonetheless, here they were, in the middle of the Amazon that. rain. What? That she wasn't much for exploring? He's literally dressed identically to Yeah. They're like, not much for exploring. Fuck you, she's dressed exactly for it. She has the right shit and everything. Yeah. Except they should both be wearing long sleeves. Oh, uh, yeah. And the panel reinforce you, you are in uh, earmuffs. 
Also, they should have long pants and long socks. Yeah. You know why the earmuffs thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Would you like to tell everyone in chat? Because, because I know, I don't know the names of the species of fruit fly, but there's a fruit fly that will lay eggs in your ear. It's happened a lot. That's why they, they always say wear earmuffs when you go down to, I forget which forest, rainforest, but it's basically you're, you're supposed to have earmuffs. Yep, and you're supposed to have uh, long socks in case you end up going through a waterway that has a type of leech in it. Yep. So yeah, that's why. And also, it... the long sleeves are because of mosquitoes. Yeah. So yeah, when, if you ever want to visit a rainforest, wear earmuffs. <laughs> earmuffs <laughs> Protect your ears. Long sleeves, long socks, long like pants. Yeah, it may get hot, but you'll be safe. You'll be hot, but you won't have anything in you or on you that's trying to eat you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Force on a little adventure of their own. Not to forget, their three-year-old Kara had also come along. At the last minute, the arrangements they had made for her had fallen through, wait, and wait, they were left wait. with no other Bear option. Dog? Is, is he married to the much younger woman? Guess so. Sure. <laughs> but to bring her along. Sure. Thankfully, it hadn't been much hassle at all, and she seemed to be having the time of her life. As the day wore on, they soon came to realize that they wouldn't be reaching their planned resting spot on time. They right. had gone turned around sometime earlier in the day, and therefore were behind schedule. I think we'll have to camp here for the night. His wife gave him a concerned look. The land here wasn't very dry. In fact, it was downright damp. But there was nothing for it. This would have to do. No As shit, it was damp. It's a ring for it. I'm sorry. That's okay. Also, technically, not all dirt in a rainforest is damp, but it would be moist in some way or another, or soft. Yeah. As the sun set, the forest took on a darker, more malicious tone. But you the would fire... probably not be able to step in the dirt as the many layers on the ground. Yeah. There are many types of rainforests, but they all have layers of foliage that, one, keeps the dirt moist, but is also different layers of, uh, basically how shit degrades at the bottom and becomes soil. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The fire they had lit to cook their dinner cast looming shadows all around them. The night brought a whole host of different creatures out, and with them, a different type of fear. Kara came over to sit with them by the small fire. She was damp and dirty. It was practically impossible to keep her dry and clean in this environment, and they had long since given up trying. When they reached a dry campsite, she'd have a nice bath, and any problems could be dealt with as they became known. For now, her previous deworming and anti-parasitic medicines would have to suffice. Kara lay down by his side, quietly content. He smiled to himself and looked up at her reflection on the trees. What was that on her back? Why? He looked down at Kara, but there was nothing. She slept soundly by his side. He had been sure he saw something moving on her back. Did you see that? His wife shot back a quizzical look. Perhaps it was nothing, just his imagination. He pet her head gently as she slept. The next morning came, and they continued on their hike. It was still a fair way to the camp, but they would easily reach it now that they were already more than halfway there. The hot sun beat down upon them. The canopy of the rainforest, though, provided much needed shelter. The humidity and wet ground made for a tough hike, however. They reached well, a small village, though it was- I'm sure they'd be getting some rain. Yeah. There's no hotel, it would be nice to not be sleeping on the ground tonight. Dr. Wu had stated the first thing she needed. 
was a hot bath. He wasn't sure how warm the water would be, but by this point, any shower would do. And why not make it a family event? Kara surely could use the bath as well. The three stepped into the outdoor shower. The cool water oh my beating God. off their skin was this bliss. Is why they he bent woman. down to give Kara a good scrub. That's yeah. when he saw it. Her hair. It was moving on its own. It changed shape, curled and straightened at his mere touch. He pulled his hand back in disgust. What was in her fur? He turned to show his wife when he saw her shadow on the shower walls. Her hair was dancing and moving like a snake. Your... your hair! He screamed as he pointed at her. She slowly turned around, her hair waving like Medusa herself. Welcome back. Today I bring you SCP-189, Hair Imitating Parasite. Please remember to subscribe. The next thing we knew, we were here, locked up. It would have stopped by now. And I'm pretty sure it won't be going that wildly either. Yeah. Dr. Feinstead, you're not locked up. We're here to help you. Oh, I know, I know. And I appreciate it. Sorry. Just being a little dramatic. Understandable. Uh, we'll try to make your stay with us as painless and as quick as possible. This thing is nasty. This Why is, is it always how it happened, but okay. Yeah. You better be careful with that, Jen. Wouldn't want that little guy munching through your perfectly styled hair. <laughs> I know you're being sarcastic, but I sense that jealousy, Doc. Back to business. So, this little guy latches onto your skin, starts feeding off your hair, and eventually replaces it? Essentially, yes. That's pretty creepy. But otherwise, no side effects? So far, no. None that we've seen. It might actually not be an SCP. Just sounds like a parasite, really. Let's speak to the doctors and... What do you mean not be an SCP? It's an SCP. I want to point out... It's obviously an SCP by default, considering it can literally mimic hair. Yeah. It has an anomalous property. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. See how they're progressing, shall we? And Kara. Don't forget Kara. Chen and Klaus walked into the containment cell. <laughs> the... the dog! Kara had been completely shaven. Though in actual fact, only 20% of her hair had remained by the time they had reached the Foundation. Sadly, that's not what the Foundation would have done. We already read what they would have done with the animal. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> Humans would have been fine, not so much to doubt. The other 80% had been replaced I by the... I think we know what they would have done with the animal because... Humans have a lot less hair on their body that it would have been able to use. Where on an animal like a dog, there's a lot of fur everywhere. You can't really find all of them. So it's safer to just... Yeah. Yep. The sad fact. Sad. Yep. Parasite. Is this funny to you? Sorry. Sorry, I, I couldn't help myself. Uh, Dr. Feinstead, how are you today? It's always nice to talk to another doctor. Shove your manners. When are we getting out of here? Finstead's attitude had taken a severe shift from the days before. His always huh? pleasant manner had seemingly been replaced with one of agitation and anger. Um, we're doing our best. Are you really? You've shaved my dog, you've shaved my wife, you've shaved me. Why aren't we free to go? We'll need to conduct some more tests and ensure you- Why would the Foundation need to euthanize the dog instead of, ha of just having a bald dog? It- it's sad to say, but it would be safer. Also, think of this. Just because they shave you doesn't mean they found all the parasites, because as the SCP file said, the hair part is just the tail of the parasite. Right. And so rather than looking like a parasite, it would just look like a shaven hair follicle. Yep. So 
the thing it's not saying is they don't really have a way to find all the parasites. Not without plucking every single hair out. Right. And plus, I, I, I don't think uh, the amnet, uh, not amnestics, the antibiotics would work on the, on the dog the same as a human. Yeah. That's probably why for animals, they just euthanize and incinerate instead of give the antibiotic. It's sad, but it's safer. It's very sad. You're all totally clean, and then we can let you go. Get a move on, would ya? Klaus pulled also, chin aside. He seemed... completely. Yep. It's different today. You mean he's a total a-hole now? Well, I, I mean, yeah. I think he needs to be shaved. Head to toe. We've done that. He's not infected. Who said anything about being infected? Guy needs to be taught a lesson. Again. What the fuck? Not very professional of you, Agent Chen. But perhaps you have a point. Better safe than sorry. We'll have to give them the once over again. At least then we can release them. You know, burning that hair off would be more efficient. Now, you're just being spiteful. Dr. Finstead looked up at them with a sullen look upon his face. Do you know how long it took me to grow this beard? I told you before, and you even agreed. I wasn't infected. Well, seems like a little shave didn't do much for his mood. I'm sorry, Doctor, but better safe than sorry. Yeah, yeah, when can we go? Very soon. You're free to move about the facility for the time being. Great. Wonderful. He scratched his freshly shaven cheek. Underneath his nails, a small red bump was forming. An agent what? came rushing into Klaus's office. Sir, we have a situation in the cafeteria. What is it? What's happened? Dr. Finstead. Well, he's lost his marbles. They saw Finstead, pinned to the ground by an agent. Let me go. What's going on here? He went nuts. Attacked a D-class for no reason. All right, let him up. As he got to his feet, he scratched his face again. More red raised bumps had formed. Kloss looked at him for a moment, deep in thought. Then it struck him. Quarantine everyone who's had contact with Dr. Feinstein. What is it, sir? Just do it now. Interesting seeing you on the other side of the glass, Doc. Very funny. Love the hairstyle, too. Yeah, yeah, laugh it up, Chen. Just count your lucky stars that you managed to avoid this. Explain it to me, Doc. What the hell happened? I thought Finstead was clean. He was, and he wasn't. When we shaved him, we removed all visible forms of the parasite. Visible? What happens when you shave too close? Um, cuts? Ingrown hairs. And we shaved him close twice. So that means the parasite, it, it grew inwards? Exactly. His attitude shifts. Who knows what the worm is feeding off now? What? It was already That's inwards. Only its tail was out of uh, the skin. The rest of its body was inside. What? It always faced inward and it only fed on the hair. Right. Shaving too close changes nothing about that CP. Right, and they're making it seem dangerous and harmful when it was, when it's, I mean, it's not good for you, but it's harmless. Yeah. Mm. Not good for you, but it can't kill you. Right. <laughs> SCP-189 is a species of parasitic roundworm capable of infesting any mammalian life form. Infection most commonly occurs as a result of direct skin contact with one or more egg sacs. Over the course of two to three days, the larva grows larger and develops into an adult. Adult 189 specimens grow only in length, extruding a tail which incorporates some of the pigments and keratin from the cells they consume into an outer cuticle. 
This, combined with the fact that the diameter of a specimen's tail is usually similar to that of the hair that would normally grow from the host follicle, causes 189 to be visually indistinguishable from a normal hair, except upon microscopic inspection. However, some specimens will occasionally flex, coil and uncoil, and or lash their tail, particularly in response to tactile stimulation. Yeah. Fucking Medusa. Yep. The tail can be cut or broken, or the entire organism pulled out, by any method that would similarly affect hair. Severed sections of an adult's tail can grow a new head and regenerate into a separate individual, but only if they can attach to a suitable host. Samples of 189 are to be stored in cryocontainment facility. With any surplus destroyed by incineration, Test subjects infected with 189 are to be kept in a sealed containment chamber what the with fuck? an airlock. Wait, why did they have a German party member in a cryogenics chamber? <laughs> I have no idea. Oh, that includes a chemical shower. <laughs> Personnel interacting with test subjects must wear standard NBC hazard suits throughout their time inside the containment chamber. When test subjects expire or are what terminated, the their remains must be sealed in an airtight container or body bag which is subjected to the same chemical shower as the personnel carrying it out of the containment chamber and disposed of by incineration. Mood swings can be caused by many... You notice how they didn't even mention about euthanization of animals? Yeah. <laughs> they wanted to keep euthanization, so they didn't mention it. Also, did they talk about the antibiotics? Nope. Even though there are antibiotics that can, they'll be used, they're much more preferred than pulling them out, obviously. Uh, so, removal of characters, that's kind of a hard one because, like, their names were redacted well, completely. They two characters. Yeah, they, oh, they did, yeah, but. They removed the one researcher's friend. Oh, yeah. And the SCP researcher. And also, while they didn't uh, remove the one uh, main character, they did change him to the point, or might as well not have had him. Yeah. I think a three is fine. Yeah. All right. Added gore or violence? Four, weirdly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it made it more violent. <laughs> it's pretty much unnoticeable and doesn't do anything to a person except eat their hair. <laughs> yeah, went from no violence at all to it's if you shave have the teeth, you'll become psychotic. Yeah. Alright, deviates from the plot of the article. Would you call that a two, a three, or a four? I'd say a three because they started from the very bottom, then worked their way down. Mm. Technically, even from the start, they deviated. Yeah. Think about it. Rather than that, just keeping the which rainforest they were in a secret. They named the rainforest, which slightly deviates, and they added a character. True. So you think four? Well, three or four, because they deviated a lot. They didn't even get to the part where he worked with his friend and released his own research, per care research uh, paper on the parasite. Yeah. With right. a friend. Yeah. Uh, offensiveness slash men only. Um. They literally only added a woman, to the wife, so they could show a naked woman. Yeah. I wouldn't give it too high of a number though, because. I didn't say a number. Oh, you didn't say a number. Oh, uh, I thought you did. Sorry. Yeah, but I wouldn't say too high of a number, though, because... Yeah, I think it was mild for what they usually do. Yeah, maybe like a two? Yeah. 
but you make sense because what was sexist? It was only a little sexist. Mm. Fifteen percent. Oh, not the worst. 